The following audio comes from my podcast where I interview the woman I witnessed shapeshift. We hadn't seen each other in over 10 years when we sat down, and this was the first time we ever talked about the events we experienced together. That might sound strange, but it happens a lot more often than we might think when people experience paranormal things together. I suddenly looked down and I was pregnant. I was, you don't understand, at the time, to, they, I was a hundred pounds, five foot three. It's noticeable. It's not like, <laughs> and I was pregnant. I had to leave work. It's not, I'm a scientist. I know the placebo effect. I know the ability to obscure, you know, and even there have been women who have had, you know, frenetic or, you know, pregnancies, like things like that. This wasn't it. I was very pregnant. I could feel the baby kicking. Oh man. And I thought, and the only thing I realized is at that point I got a text from Ryan and I thought, oh my God, I am supposed to see this guy. He, and the last time he reacted very yeah. poorly. I couldn't see you. Is that what happened? That's what happened, I think. And all yeah. I said was to you is it's happening again. Yeah, I can't see you tonight. It's happening again. And I thought to myself, he won't even know what that means. But something told me you did know what that meant. But I thought, I wonder if he's going to see this too. Because one of two things was going to happen. Either you were going to come in and you were going to see nothing and I would realize that I was insane. Or you were going to see that I was pregnant and you would realize this world was insane. Either way, my world was about to be fucked up depending on what your reaction was going to be. Yeah, the world is never going to be the same. Never going to be the same. And it never has been. Nothing would have really been different depending on either way you react because I knew something was not right. Something about the way the world interpreted the world wasn't true. Yeah, the, the laws and the rules of reality. Weren't true. Uh, uh, yeah. Then what? Question mark. And yeah. that, that really is the best way to describe what my life has been like since then. It's then what? How do you go ahead living your life when you know the rules aren't quite what they are, but you don't know what they are either? So I wanted to cold open the series using that audio from my podcast where I interview the woman who I witnessed shapeshift because I feel like that will give the viewer the sensation of having a spontaneous paranormal experience where you're confused, there's no context, and it kind of just leaves you thinking, what the fuck? I think the importance of including that clip mostly is for the benefit of the viewer to understand why me, a stand-up comedian for 20 years, is so into the paranormal. Because I had an extreme paranormal experience on multiple occasions where I witnessed someone shapeshift. And that sent me on a years-long journey, a quest, looking for information, trying to make sense of my experience so I felt less crazy. So for the better part of the last 10 years, I've been doing a podcast called Me and Paranormal You over 650 episodes of researching, investigating, and interviewing people with paranormal experiences to try to understand my own experience a little bit better. talk to you for a while. Show me a sign, this is Ryan. 
so eager to talk again with you. Are you from the Procyon star system? Are you from Sirius, the dog star? <laughs> and the tone went off exactly at the same time. Yeah. Welcome to Earth from Sirius, the dog star. Can we get confirmation? You are from Sirius. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my God, thank you. Oh my God. Hello. Hello, welcome. Thank you so much for coming to talking to us. I have, oh my gosh. I think that is, you're welcome. Yeah, I have so, we have, we have so many questions. Um, You want us to ask them, okay? Oh my God, this thing is going bonkers. I love it. Thank you so much for for being here with us. I've been waiting for so long to talk to you. We are trying to figure out if consciousness is part of everything that has made your travel here possible. If we can make the high strange familiar, that's what this is all about. That's what my comedy has been about and has been trending toward for, for years now. It, you know, definitely deviated away from that mainstream club act guy who just wanted to be on the road doing stand-up comedy for the rest of his life, making a living, making people laugh. Now there's definitely an element of, can we you know, connect this world of the believable and the unbelievable? And how do we get from one side of that cliff to the other? And that's through comedy. It's just more fun to believe in stuff, you know what I mean? Like, that's my motto in life. I like, I like believing, it's just a better way of living. Like, I believe in Bigfoot. Oh, hell yeah, I do. There's only one thing I love more than believing in Bigfoot, and that is telling people publicly that I believe in Bigfoot. <laughs> because I think you're crazy, you know? And the main reason I believe in Bigfoot is this, because thousands and thousands and thousands of people have said they've seen Bigfoot. And call me crazy, but that's enough for me, <laughs> okay? You know? Thousands and thousands of people. But we live in the modern Western world, don't we? You know, where science has replaced God. Scientists are the new high priests walking around our villages, telling us all what we're supposed to believe in, sitting on their throne of textbooks. Oil my genitals, and I'll tell you about the cosmos. <laughs> The universe is 98% dark energy and dark matter, but nobody's ever seen it. Well, guess what thousands of people have seen? Bigfoot. <laughs> it's inevitable that I end up here to film a comedy special in a haunted school. And there was no chance in hell I wasn't gonna be doing some investigations here. So you're essentially a class clown. <laughs> the whole idea of this investigation is to try to show that consciousness is the connective tissue between all paranormal phenomena. That there really is no separation between alien, ghost, Bigfoot, and other. Post Town Elementary School is a famously haunted location with an incredible amount of ghost activity. That's why it's the perfect location to launch this investigation. Just because we plan on using CE5 protocols or a version of CE5 protocols developed by Dr. Stephen Greer to initiate UFO sightings and or alien contact, it doesn't mean that we're going to close ourselves off to these other paranormal investigation techniques to see what kind of contact or kind of interaction we can get.
we don't make people just try to believe in paranormal. This place makes you believe. Yeah. Okay. Post Town was opened in 1937. It took the place of six one-room schoolhouses. It ran until the school year 99 and 2000, and then they shut it down to move into the new school. Everything's in like a campus now. And it set empty till December 2004 when we purchased the building to move into it. It's 36,500 square feet. Um, the stories we've heard since we've been here is like the little girl that fell down the stairs from horse playing and she didn't die here, but she died later at home. Uh, some people talk about the train accidents, which two of the oddest ones were, they both happened on July 4th, which was kind of weird. And one of them was 1895 and one was 1910. The one in 1910, I believe, is one of the most fatalities ever in a train crash in the state of Ohio. But they say that they use this land because it was before the school was even built like a triage center they would bring the bodies up here from the accident the team that i've assembled for this investigation is as close to perfect as i could get it we've got karen rontowski who is so tapped into her psychic abilities that we're going to be able to communicate with anything that's floating around in here I feel like everything's a frequency. So whether you're talking about aliens or you're talking about ghosts, I think there are a couple of different frequencies going on there. I definitely, I have been lately been seeing things when I close my eyes and go to sleep that are not either ghosts or demons. They are elementals, they're strange spirits, they're all kinds of, I guess they said the, the the Navy or the Army, whoever was doing investigations on UFOs, they found something like 360 different uh, types. I think they're all here. I'm very excited because we got Jim Perry, who has a mind that is unique all to itself. And it'll bring perspectives that'll crack avenues open that we didn't even think existed. When people ask me what I believe, I tell them I really have no idea. And that's the honest truth, because the more you embrace this strange world that we seemingly all live in together, I feel the less you know, the less you understand about what could really be going on. And I've seen that through not only the lens and the eyes of the people that I feature, but also my own two eyes. We got Alex Mastretta, whose background typically is in like anthropology and cryptid research, but who is not afraid of going anywhere at any time in search of anything. When I think of the term paranormal, and that it's really difficult to assess in what falls under that umbrella, right? Some people put Bigfoot underneath there, they'll put, you know, cryptozoology underneath there. I don't. I think it's kind of a separate subject. Now, by itself, paranormal means outside the norm, right? So that said, I do believe, for example, ufology and you know, ghost, poltergeist, life after death, whatever, falls under the paranormal umbrella because there's some kind of connectivity between a lot of these events on some level. Uh, we got Eric Connor from Epic Paranormal. I mean, this, I remember when I met this kid, we just immediately clicked. Uh, and he's got all kinds of gadgets. He's like the inspector gadget of the paranormal. I am all in with the paranormal. I'm all chips on the table, obsessed. You know, and I've been able to like curtail that obsession to like a healthy, workable amount over the last few years and not just go crazy with it. But when you first start in the paranormal, it is so mind blowing to know that the supernatural phenomenon is around us all the time and there are ways of interacting with it. And I just couldn't get over that. It took me like a solid year and a half, two years to really like, you know, rail that, rein that in and get my, get moving with it. We got drop-ins. We got Tim Irie, who introduced me to this place, who I met in downtown Dayton at Wiley's Comedy Club. He's like, do you really believe in the paranormal? And I was like, hell yeah. And he goes, well, do I have some stuff to tell you? And he brought me here. And so it's through Tim that this whole thing became possible. POV paranormal, they're the house team here. So, you know, utilize the people who have the closest relationship to the phenomena that you want to investigate. Bring them into the fold if they're willing to do so. So 
you can just skip ahead. It's like you skip the first 10 chapters of a book you're trying to read. Uh, personally, I feel as though there is some residual activity here, which is, as you know, uh, no matter how hard we try to communicate with it, we, there's no communication. It's just almost like a, a recording over time. It just keeps repeating itself. Um, however, uh, I had a, a preacher use an analogy for me, which caught me off guard. A Christian preacher came up to me and said, I find what you do interesting. He said, how do we really know what heaven and hell is? He said, what if some of these spirits that you're communicating with, some of their happiest moments in their life was at that location and that makes up part of their heaven. So some of the children that were here, some of their happiest moments was here playing on the playground, right. playing in the gym. And then maybe their family has a favorite vacation spot. So it's like they, they go to these different locations. So they're not really trapped here at the school, but uh, I feel as though there's a lot of playful energy here. We don't think there's anything like demonic. We've never uh, ran into that kind of energy. Now, malevolent, yeah, you could say that, but not like to the point where it's gonna hurt you. You know, to the point where like, get out of my space kind of thing, you know what I mean? And then you're done. But nothing to where it's like, it's gonna hurt you. And the more I've learned about the paranormal from watching all the groups that's been through here, it's, it's more peaceful than it is scary to me. I've had four physical, I don't wanna really call them attacks, but confrontations with spirits here. And it's always in my sleep. It's always when I'm by myself. And I, it's got so bad that I have cameras that film me sleeping. And two of the things that's happened to me, the only way we caught anything happening was from the cameras. Because I would like wake up the next morning, like, what happened, you know? And there's, you know, the one video that four holes in my forehead and another one shows it throwing me out of the bed, another one shows it throwing deep hands on me and, and I don't know what does it or why, but it's not I don't nothing here feels threatening to me. I, you know, not if I lived anywhere else and something like that happened, we pack our stuff, honey, we're leaving, you know, because it 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 should it should scare me or something. I don't know. Do you have any fears about being here this weekend? Well, you know, part of me was like, I really hope we get some really good evidence. And then another part of me was like, well, hopefully the evidence isn't so good that I refuse to step foot in the building for the taping of the stand-up comedy show. Um, that's not a real fear. Um, I've had terrifying experiences in the past. As much fun as investigating the paranormal can be, it's not always good times and laughs. About three years ago, I had the most terrifying experience of my life. I was on an expedition down in Florida that Ed Brown, a good friend and fellow researcher, had set up. On the third of five nights we were at the property, I heard a terrifying scream come from directly behind me. In that moment, I thought I was going to die. As a result of that experience, I've been in therapy for almost three years. I wondered why this happened. Earlier that night, I was conducting an investigation inside the owner's home trying to contact ghosts or spirits. Is it a coincidence that later that night I have a creature encounter? I don't think so. Sometimes when we open up the line of communications, we don't know who's going to answer on the other side. The following footage was taken soon after the event. And so I was like trying to tell myself that <laughs> at the time, like, well, you know, that's, you know, so the good news is no matter how much they're trying to scare you, but are they really going to attack you? I was like, from what I know at the time, I was like, it doesn't seem like they've ever really come up to, to make and actually had an attack. Oh, and I don't want to be the first. <laughs> no, you don't. And, uh. And so, yeah, and I felt like I might be the first just now. <laughs> yeah. 
you guys are saying that uh, from the other room there there was some stuff that happened within this chair, right? No. Well, it, this is where we were sitting. Yeah, this, is where this you were chair sitting right here, we yeah. actually got uh, on our SLS camera uh, an entity sitting in that chair, and this one right here. And one of the girls that was with us, she is a, a preschool teacher. She sat next to him, and once she did, that that entity on the camera kind of, I don't know, kind of like it were relaxed a little more. Because if you watch it, if you watch it on our SLS, it's like moving around and like it's kind of leaning away from. I can't remember who first sat in that chair. I want to say one of the guys sat in that chair, and it was kind of leaning away from him. But once she sat down. And started talking, it, it was like it just relaxed. Mm -hmm. So this is where the flashlight was when we, we were sitting in there when it came on. And it got twisted for it to come on. Amos? We've got some friends here with us tonight, today. We've told them a little bit about you. Can you show them uh, how you turn that flashlight on? Let them know you're here. Sarah, our buddy Ryan right here, you're really gonna enjoy him later. And we know, uh, we know how much you like to laugh and play. Well, he's here to make you laugh. Can you, uh, can you come over here and say hi to Ryan? We can try to make up some jokes later for you, or even now, I guess. Let's, uh... Give me a place, or uh, give me a, an object, or a thing. Um, I could, like animal, person. Orange. 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 Okay, give me a location. Uh, playground. It's like a really bad ghost improv. <laughs> <laughs> so there's an orange on a playground, but the other fruit didn't want to play because they said that it didn't have appeal. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a question that we normally don't like to ask but it normally gets a response especially in here i'm gonna go ahead and ask it okay amos if you're here with us or the principal and you don't want us in your office or you don't want us in this room can you turn that light on and let us know You turn that on and we'll get out of here. We'll get out of this room. I'm glad that uh, <clears throat> it's kind of a mix, you know, it's like you want that to happen, but with that question, it's like, you know, if you get activity, you want to stay there. Yeah. But it's like, oh, you got to respect them. And if they want out, if you want us to stay, don't turn the light on. <laughs> there you go. Hey, we're staying. No. Yeah. Did you hear that? Yeah. That was that was in the hallway. That was the blinds over here for audio, but that that first one was in the hallway. It, it, yeah. There's unless Daryl's creeping around. Nope. Sounded like something moved out there. Sarah, if you're standing out here, you can come on in here. You're not going to come into the principal's office to get in trouble or anything. Just come in here with us. When you did that, I really felt like there was a child following you in his outer room just now. Like I, like I felt like I was going to see like, a full body like child. I got goosebumps. As you turned and walked back in, it felt like, you know, like how kids are little barnacles on yeah, people's legs. Yeah, yeah, Sarah, honey, if you did come in here with us, which we believe you did, thank you. Yeah, I'm feeling like a shift back and forth, like a, 
like a weird energy, kind of like a yeah, like something's kind of like shifting around. It feels like, but it's like you know, it's pretty in here. Right, right. Which might just be the Dunkin' Donuts coffee I had this morning. <laughs> Unfortunately, this is where the accident happened. Yeah, she fell. Yeah. Straight down. This is actually the, the area where Sarah fell from right here. Straight down. She she didn't die here, but she died a few days later from complications, unfortunately. But again, we use that analogy like, you know, is she had her happy moments here, you know, and that's why we think she's here, because she did have good moments in the school. But then also the sudden tragedy that happened, I feel as though could hold that energy. Like I said, we've heard people claim to hear her scream, the scream coming from this area, and I've actually heard it one time, and it is just bone chilling. Is that what you mean when you say there's an escalation? This seemingly is occurring now. You know, you're starting to hear screams from spirits that were, uh, you think, playful at some point in time. Potentially, and then going off the growls, like we were talking about earlier, you know, there's different classes of EVPs. Class A, where it's like you and I talking right now. You can make out every word we're saying. Class B is a little more muffled, but you can still kind of make it out. And then class C is just garbled, you know, just you can't understand a word they're saying. Sometimes I wonder if some of those disembodied voices we hear isn't just maybe a, like a class C disembodied voice. So it's not actually a growl. It's just them trying to say something, but they can't manifest the energy to actually speak clearly. So That's it interesting. Comes out, comes out as a, yeah. Uh, just that one, another theory, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's like one of those things too where I always wonder like, well, if I played this backwards, would yeah, I hear yeah, something? Yeah. But then, it is interesting because, I mean, in life we all have different, like, enunciations and pronunciations or whatever, so yeah. it... Yeah. That. That's gotta be... That's gotta be good. the music room. The old music room was the dog. See, I don't hear it now. This place is massive. You guys Ooh, chill, chill. Yeah. This is massive. So this is, this is the main room we're talking about here. That all way. It's, it's like a like totally like different feel. Door was oh, going back and forth. Yeah. See, I thought I heard music. I thought it was like a high pitched kind of squeak. That kind kept of a locker door or something? Kind of, but it's, it had like a high pitched like musical quality, like, yeah, yeah. like a violin almost. I think I just heard it. Really? Yeah. Just now? If there's a teacher or any students or anyone in here with us, we heard some noises and wasn't sure exactly where it was coming from. If you're in this classroom, if this is where those noises were coming from, can you turn that flashlight on? Oh, oh I got it. Oh, holy, sh I got it. If you're in this classroom, if this is where those noises were coming from, can you turn that flashlight on? Oh. Oh, holy sh I got it. 
turn that flashlight on. Oh, oh, I got it. Oh, holy, I got it. Thank you. Thank okay, you. It's going out. Oh, wow. Whoa. Thank you very much. Mama Mia. Thank oh, dude, I got oh, super goosebumps. Oh, whoa. Thank you so right, much. That light came on and slowly went out. Now, how does that happen? Oh, I was I was actually on. zooming in as it happened I think so it might be a little blurry but it I've got the whole thing and then what was weird is how it came on and then dimmed right back out and it had a flutter too whoever did that whatever did that thank you so much we appreciate you um, and I know we're being greedy asking for it again but sometimes, you know, you get a taste of the sugar and you just want more. I mean, if you want us to, uh, you know, just be happy with what we got, just maybe give us a quick little flash and we'll hit the bricks. I might stop because yeah, I, mean, I feel like we're really, yeah. <laughs> we're, we're asking for a lot. Yeah. Thank you so much. I'm gonna come get a close yeah. shot of this. And Brian, will you do me a favor? Yes, sir. And uh, show me by picking up the flashlight that it's not on and then turn it on and off. Oh. Mm -hmm. It's off. It's a twister, it's not even a button. Yeah. It's a you have to twist it. That's wild. You twisted it like two turns for it to come on. It wasn't like it was barely yeah. on. You know, yeah. It that was to go on. awesome. That was, that, like was awesome. dude, that was awesome. Dude, that was that was that was great. Oh, dude, that was God. insane. Ernie, on command. Like the witching hour too. I mean, like not witching hour, but like I know you guys gotta go. Oh, now I'm, I, I yeah, it's like I kind of want to call off work tonight. I don't ever use that technique. Yeah, and you know it's such a good one because it's it's. It, that just doesn't happen. Right. Right. So to be realistic though, Ryan, and here in the last three months, we just started doing that. Yeah. <sighs> so when you twist that and turn it off, that connection's broke. So the spirits, the energy create that, that they fill that gap. Like the bridge. Yeah. The bridge, bridge. Yeah. To create that light to come on. Mm. I got the name you know of the mean? product. I, <laughs> I got the, uh, the titular saying? phrase. I got the titular phrase of the <laughs> tentative phrase of the documentary. <laughs> You were we're all, uh, all of us are jacked yeah. up, right? Yeah. All that <laughs> right. <laughs> that adrenaline, and this is why we do that, man. We're like yeah. adrenaline junkies, and this is one of the best adrenaline rushes you can use. Yeah. Something yeah. like that happens, and you're just like, boop, boop, boop. you know, you start racing. That was wow. And I'm glad you guys were able to experience oh, yeah. it too. I, mean, I was down the hall. We're yeah, like he was chasing. <laughs> he heard that. He heard that sound again. So he was. Oh. Yeah, I was trying, trying to find that sound. So hey. Yeah, it's par for the course. This is why when you come to a place and you have access to the people who have like the most intimate relationship with the phenomena and the location there, to not try to be investigating with them is I think the number one mistake yeah. people can make. When it's available to you and when it's possible. Yeah. I mean, obviously there's, you know, not everybody has, you know, the luxury of being able to do it like we're doing it here. Right, right. right. Um, and, it's just, this is what you get. Yes. Yeah. Right? We're outside investigating, and clear as day, through the gateway device, a woman's voice says, aliens. And with the gateway device, there's supposed to be no forward words coming through at all. There should be nothing. But yet, clear as day, a woman says, aliens. Then later that night, we're investigating. I'm investigating up here. And again, aliens, the word aliens comes through about four or five times total. The word aliens comes through crystal clear. And it all started after you, after Ryan came here, talking about the experiment, the CE5 experiment, the alien contact experiment. So Twice. Yeah, we were talking about CE5 right and a little bit of water on the floor, but that doesn't make a bang. 
The CE5 protocols were developed by Dr. Stephen Greer. Essentially, the protocols tap into human consciousness through meditation and intention to manifest close encounters of the fifth kind with extraterrestrials. Many people experience profound results when performing the protocols. UFOs will appear in the sky, alien entities even captured on camera. At the end of the day, I don't believe there's much difference between these protocols and the techniques paranormal investigators have been using for years to try to communicate with ghosts at haunted locations. Oh, God. Yeah, so I guess this is where we gotta do the CE5. For sure. After hearing that, you talked about it twice. And both times, as soon as you said it, boom, boom. So yeah, I would use this room for sure. Why did I know coming to the school just to do the paranormal inside that we were gonna get drawn outside yeah. to this wooded and we knew it and whether it's Brian talking about his brother having a, a Sasquatch and Omaha sighting, Bigfoot sighting a mile from here, the Little Miami River. It wouldn't surprise me at all if someone has had a creature sighting here uh, because I personally have not here at the post town area, but my brother has uh, on the river. He was driving past the river, looked over and seen a huge figure thought for a moment it may have just been a hunter in a ghillie suit, turned around and came back, and what he's seen, he swears to this day, was uh, was a Bigfoot. And that's actually not far, maybe a mile down the road. From here? Yeah, 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 just down the road here where the road kind of makes an S turn. Yeah, he, uh, he'll, he'll, he swears to this day that he, it was a Bigfoot that he's seen. Now we're getting gateway. I mean, we asked for it. I am I know I asked for it doing the C5 and stuff, but now it's like wet and cold. And now the gateway's telling us to come look for me in the fucking woods, like in the field or whatever. I mean, I love it, but I'm like, <sighs> thank God last week I went to <sighs> Florida and actually confronted that fear, but. <sighs> 